did it, we did it, oh yeah, we did it. Hmm, sounds familiar. Like screaming like, yeah, we did it, and like the thing is right behind him. I can't remember what it is though. Hello all Dark Souls lore fans, and welcome to another lore and guide uh, video. This is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to try these to be a little bit shorter, more condensed, but... Not for a lack of information, this is actually a great video as far as lore goes, and hopefully I can do it justice. So Mytha, the Baneful Queen, lives up to her title in more than just name, but also her physical form. On first sight, you might view a monster with head and hand, but wouldn't expect her cursed form to be one that was driven by simple envy and jealousy. Like most of Dark Souls, the mountainous peaks of Drang Lake are met with even more valleys, and the Valley of Pooling is no exception. Another well-earned name, the area is filled with pools and reservoirs, pumped full as we move closer into the Queen's bath and personal chamber. The only creatures native being the poison hornbugs, but the source of the poison may go deeper than expected. From what we hear from Gilligan, we find near the face of the windmill is that the poison has the benefits of improving beauty and health. He also tells us that it's the reason that Mytha inhabits the valley. From his recounting, he tells us that the queen believed her husband to be in love with another woman. While the twisted blade you receive from her soul claims she was more beautiful than anyone, this act of simple jealousy sent her into a rage, assuming it was the prince of Alcan old Iron King, and her efforts would be futile from the beginning, as he already liked someone else. Desperately, she tried to achieve perfect beauty. She built an earthen tower and sent laborers to dig out the poison and pump it directly to her chambers, using a windmill to power it. This earns Mytha her name, the Queen of Poison, a reference to Mithridates, a king of Pontus, an opponent to Rome who sought immunity to poisons by drinking them. When defeated, he consumed poisons to try to commit suicide, but was unable and instead had a servant kill him. The queen, in an unfortunate likeness, would use servants to her own ends, removing their faces for seeing her monstrous form. Despite her form, she has attained great power from her efforts and ruthlessness. Corpses lay about the grounds working throughout undeath or loss of limb, as seen from the work hook we find in the Mimic. Additionally, the monstrous creatures looming the poison gas who hurled dark orbs similar to Mytha's head during the boss battle show us where they had been experiments in dark magics. The dark gauntlets also inside the Mimic give us a vision into the secrecy behind Mytha's actions. Given Alkin's love for fire and sunlight, this would have been frowned upon, hence the use of a Mimic. Mytha's form has been transformed to that of a serpent, covered in scales and horns. Truthfully, the poison has kept her youthful, if not immortal. This form is reminiscent of dragonkin, serpents being considered to be related to. But there is one unexplained part of this whole situation. Where does the poison come from? All things lean to one possibility. Sleeping dragon of Synth. Assuming Sosholva lies below Harvest Valley, it's possible for the dragons to have been releasing the poison above ground and into the earth above. As an arch dragon with the power of rock and poison of infused flames, this likely is the sources of the pools. In short, poison causes her to undergo a transformation as a result of the arch dragon's power. Not realizing until it was too late, she severed her own head, keeping it away from the rest of her revolting form. The desert sorcerers who likely saw through the source of this power, due to their worship of arch dragons, wanted to serve the queen with the purpose of obtaining this fountain of youth, using their beauty to affect their appointments. Speaking of looking for love in all the wrong places, we can't talk about Mytha without mentioning the covetous demon. A gluttonous monster who was originally human. Whoever he may have been, he fell for the queen, but his affections were not returned. He turned to eating as a remedy for his broken heart and was consumed by his hunger. 
Mitha, taking advantage of that, kept him close. The broken stairs supposedly lead to Mitha's personal chambers. The irony is that the one person who loves Mitha regardless of reason sits barricaded away, forever longing, unable to see their own futility. This was a surprising video that I made to debate state, and I swear it was pretty painful to go through, mainly because I challenged to uh, parry as much as I could throughout this time, and so there was a lot of tough fights here, uh, a lot of very quick enemies. So if you want to catch more of these videos live or have a character that you'd like me to make a lore video on, please leave it in the comments and subscribe to the page to see all other lore videos I've made. A big thanks to Nike Vikey for providing insight into the characters, which spurred my whole research into Mytha and further beyond. Thank you. Whole fucking 360 shit. Fucking just threw her head. It would be covered in poison. Oh, thank God. Oh shit. <laughs>